YouTube back with another one for you. It's Tom. Uh, so this one here is a continuation of the redemption manual as well. This is video number 13. We're talking about money, uh, how it works, and the, the history of it. We got into a little bit about gold and shit like that in the last video. Uh, money of uh, ex exchange, uh, you know, uh, money of account, money that's backed by gold, and then we got, f you know, the fiat currency, which is the which is the exchange money. It uh, it isn't backed by anything. So let's um, let's get into what this is talking about here. Let's get into this. It's kind of early. Super early for me, actually. So, uh, all right, let's get into this here. Fractional money is what we got here. So fractional money, the fourth kind of so-called money, fractional money also comes as a result of people storing their gold coins with goldsmiths. The goldsmiths observed that very few people, that very few of their depositors ever wanted to remove their gold coins at the same time. Withdrawals seldom exceeded 10% to 15% of their stockpiles of precious metals. They ha uh, they hated coveted 10th commandment violation. So to see all that gold just sitting there and not being used. So they began to lend or steal some of the gold out by issuing more receipts. It seemed perfectly safe to lend between 80 to 85% out, which meant they would still have reserves to pay any demand for, for withdrawal. In the beginning, the gold owners uh, were not even aware that their gold had been loaned. As the owners became aware of the practice, the goldsmiths began to offer to share the interest they earned on the loans with the gold owners. But the entire practice didn't make such sense. The gold was not was not really available to be loaned. The gold was providing the value behind the receipts. One might say that the receipts was, it was a proxy for the gold, since the gold owner uh, and the one who borrowed the gold. So the thing is that they noticed that no <laughs> that nobody was ever coming to get their gold. So what they did was they started to lend out people's gold without them knowing. Then when people found out, they were like, okay, so yeah, we've been doing that, but we're going to give you some interest on the money that we're making and shit like that too. Okay. And then they got to the point where they start, just started issuing fucking paper without actually having the gold to back it up. That shit is called fraud. This is what every single dollar bill has been. Uh, since they ended the gold clause, it's all been fraudulent, fraudulent money that's been uh, created because it hasn't been backed by anything. So, uh, so this is what they what they still do. This is what they still do. And even people who are buying gold on the markets, you're buying the, you know, you're buying um, gold off the internet that supposedly somebody's holding it for you. You're fucking investing in gold and shit like that, but you don't physically have it. They're selling you more fucking receipts for gold than they actually have. If everybody wanted to go cash in all of their gold stocks and all that shit that they supposedly have in gold, they couldn't pay them all. All right, know that. So it's all a fucking Ponzi scheme. So the uh, receipts they both had proxies for the for the same gold. If you give someone your proxy vote at a stockholder meeting, you can't also show up. You can't also show up the vote. The same principle applies to the receipts or proxies for the gold coins. So here is not, so here is how fractional reserve works. You deposit your gold and get a receipt that you use as money of account. The goldsmith banker issues loans in the amount of 85% of the amount that you deposit. The borrower also gives the receipts the amount, gives also is given the receipts for the amount that he borrowed. That means that there are 85% more receipts than there is gold to back it up. Thus, the goldsmith, the banker, acting as a bank, created 85% more money of account and placed it into circulation through the borrower's um, deposit or loan. So you're, so you're loaning them the fucking money. Then they go ahead and issue 10 times the amount. This is, this is what we do now. So they issued phony receipts and artificially expanded the so-called money supply. So at this point, the certificates were no longer 100% backed by gold. So they could only represent a fraction of their face value. Thus, the receipts become what are called fractional money of account, and the process that created them is called fractional reserve banking. This same process causes inflation of prices 
and said another way deflation of the value of which is assumed to be money of exchange but in reality only money of account created by a ledger of entry which a receipt is given on a note or a future promise to pay and lawful money of exchange or whatever is due according to the note one might say that the goldsmiths the bankers created so-called money out of nothing by a ledger entry but this is not quite true what they really did was created money of account out of debt note that is a neat trick that i bet you wish you could do and you can do that the old saying goes that money of exchange doesn't grow on trees well the bankers have done have done one even better money of account grows out of debt this is money of account that is the cost of the bankers that cost the bankers absolutely nothing to create and they earn all the interest the financial portfolio ledger creating creating by instruments of account receivable from notes uh, creating by loaning a percentage of the true value of the specie in exchange for accounting of a greater portion in return without any risk on their principal, which eventually was replaced solely on such collateral to secure the note so that the principal was removed as the true value of exchange, which in turn made the true creditor the borrower since he or she is the, is, <laughs> is the only party of agreement which secured the note for making the so-called loan. So what this is basically saying is that they're creating money out of fucking thin air and it's just you um that created the loan and you lent the money to yourself and they are fucking collecting interest and payments off of you when they had nothing to do with the fucking transaction other than sitting there and fucking tricking you into um agreeing to pay them <laughs> you see how fucking crazy that is so we can look at the fractional money and see what is a transitional form that exists between receipt money and fiat money it has the same characteristics of both as the fraction becomes smaller and less unless it resembles receipt money and more closely it resembles the fiat money when the fraction reaches zero the, the transaction is complete there is no example in history where men once had they accepted the concept of fractional money didn't reduce the fraction lower and lower until it eventually became zero the transition from fra from fractional money to fiat money cannot occur without the participation of the so-called government through a mechanism that is called a central bank that uh this happened in the military social construct known as the united states between 1913 and the federal reserve act that was passed in 1933 when military congress adopted the commander-in-chief executive orders and went off the gold standard and you know something else that's funny about that shit too is that when they when they issued the notice for everybody and told them that uh that persons were no longer going to be able to to use gold and silver um for uh transactions they failed to mention that you know that usc 26 persons is a corporation so it's, i mean they don't even have the fucking authority to tell you as a private man you can't fucking do that uh so everybody mistook the word person for meaning a live living man or woman and then they went ahead and forfeited their gold to these motherfuckers crazy so the creditor the federal reserve board of governors creates money of account by loaning it to the so-called federal military construct fractional money by purchasing government military bonds security debt in doing so, the Federal Reserve Board governors become the creditor of the federal military government construct. This is important to understand as you read the article, what banks don't want you to know. Commercial banks also create money of account when they loan money of account to individuals and businesses. There is nothing standing behind the money, the fiat money, but the debt instruments. The Federal Reserve notes say this is a legal tender for all debt, public and private. Their politicians say the full faith and credit of the United States is behind the so-called money. But that is an outright empty statement and the misrepresentation of true facts backing the full faith and credit of the United States, unless they mean the blind acceptance by all walks of life to accept the constitutors to pay the debts and belonging to another like a co-signer for a debt which was incurred with no right of use established concerning the goods of power conveyed by the agreement. As we know, we have no power to say no because we are neither the creator nor a member of the posterity of the former social compact nor the present military social construct known as the United States. The so-called military social government constructs has no assets to speak of except the labor of the people and the property of the people. So the military social construct has pledged our labor and our property to pay their debt through misrepresentation by and through their public institutions of learning. They fucking did tricking everybody and, you know, making them believe that they even are governments crazy the federal reserve cartel is a very is very candid in their publications that we have a fiat money system their own publications tell the story currency cannot be redeemed or exchanged for treasury gold or any other asset used uh, used as banking the question of just what what assets back the federal reserve notes has little but bookkeeping ledger entry significance i bet you thought that federal reserve bank um, federal reserve bank of new york uh and so you can i mean you can look this shit up so banks bankers are creating money of account based on the borrower's promise to pay the iou 
Bankers then create more money of account by monetizing, so to speak, the private debts of the business and individuals based on their future performance, the labor, of servicing the so-called loan. No, I bet you thought the Federal Reserve Banks of New York. And so these are different different books that you could look at the, that kind of go into a little more detail as to what it is that they do uh, as far as like banking goes or fractional banking and all that shit. Because that shit is crazy. So, in the so-called military construct known as the United States, neither paper currency nor money of account nor the ledger of paper deposits have true value as commodities. Intrinsically, a dollar bill is just a piece of paper. Deposits are merely a book ledger, the entries. Coins do have more intrinsic value as metal, but generally far less than their face amount due to uh, diverse weights and measures being used to adulterate the species for profit or, or hoarding. So, they kind of, so they, so they cut in the metal. Right, and putting putting cheaper cheaper metals in there to make fucking pennies, uh, quarters, and all that stuff. So what then makes these instruments, checks, paper, and coins acceptable at face value in payment of all debts and for other monetary uses? Mainly, it's the confidence of the people, the full faith and credit, that they will be able to exchange the money of account for other financial assets and real goods of service whenever they choose to do so. This partly is a matter of law. Currency has been designated legal tender by the military social government construct. That is, it is accepted so if people didn't want to fucking deal with the money then they couldn't and it only has value because you believe it does you know what i'm saying so that's how that works so modern monetary systems have a fiat based based literal money by decree with depository institutions acting as fiduciaries creating obligations against themselves with the fiat base acting in part as reserves the Decree appears on the currency notes. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. While no individual could refuse to accept such money for debt repayment, exchange contracts could easily be composed to thwart it, uh, to thwart its use in everyday commerce. However, a forceful explanation as to why money of account is accepted is that the Federal Reserve government requires it as payments for tax liabilities. Anticipation of the need to clear this debt creates a demand for the pure dollar. The last two sentences from the above quote alludes to the military social federal construct debt and that is so-called the U.S. citizens have been obligated to pay that debt. So if one thinks about the debt-based money systems, you will come to realize that, they, that their total so-called money supply is backed by nothing but debt. So debt is money. You understand that? So this is hard enough to fathom, but it's even harder to grasp that if everyone paid off his or her debt, there would still be no money left in existence. And that's a fact. So the fact that... <laughs> You know, so even if we brought the fucking debt down to zero, there would still be no fucking money because debt is money. And that's, so that's how the fiat system works. So even if we paid off all the debt, we'd still have zero dollars. So something else to consider is that the trillions of dollars in circulation appears to represent tremendous amount of assets. But someone owes every bit of this money in lawful form of species of currency. So all the national debt is actually money and it's payable to all the fucking people. So it's not really debt. It's that nobody's claimed it back on the uh, private side. Nobody's closed the fucking account. So it's showing up as debt. That's how that works. So if all the bank loans were paid, no one could ever have a bank deposit and there would be not, there would not be a dollar or coin of currency in circulation. This is a staggering thought. People are completely dependent on the commercial bankers banks. Someone has to borrow every dollar, every money of account people have in circulation, cash or credit. If the bankers create ample synthetic money, people are prosperous. If not, people starve. People are absolutely without permanent species of money systems. When one gets in, when one gets a complete grasp of the picture, the tragic absurdity of the people's hopeless situation is almost incredible. But there it is, 100% of the money. Uh, and so this is so that so that last statement was off a book there. And so all those books are there quoted too. You can go ahead and check those out. So I think all that shit is interesting. And so what this is saying, so basically all of the national debt is actually money since money is, since, since uh, debt is money and it's all payable to the people. So it's not really that it's all debt, it's that nobody's claimed it as like OIDs, original issue discounts and shit like that on the uh, private side. So it's all showing up as debt. So given this system, it is not hard to imagine that the Federal Reserve Banks uh, is not interested in all these loans being paid off as the following quotes show as large and growing numbers of analysts on the other hand now regard the national debt as something useful if not an actual blessing they believe the national debt need not be reduced at all the national debt federal reserve bank of philadelphia 
Debts, public and private, are here to stay. It plays an essential role in economic processes. What is required is not the abolition of debt, but it's but it's prudent use and intelligent management. I have to agree. I mean, the system is set up lovely for everybody to thrive. We've all just been taught how to use it the wrong way. So when you learn how to use this system, you can do fucking amazing with it. You just have to like really take the time and learn. That's what it is. So the reason the Federal Reserve cartel is not interested in paying off the debt is because they make huge profits from the interest payments. But let's consider the morality of earning interest on these loans. If you were to rent an asset from someone, you would see the logic of paying him or her a um, rental fee. The rental fee reimburses them for the potential income they could have made through other opportunities they missed while you were using the asset. Interest payments on a loan are nothing more than fees for renting the money. But in the case of a debt-based money system, the money was created when the loan was approved and it, and it was credited to your account. In this situation, you are not using the lender's assets. He created the assets with the stroke of a pen or entry on a computer within a ledger of within a ledger accounting book system. So why should anyone collect a rental fee interest on that stroke or entry? While this system may be legal because the so-called military social government construct has granted them the role of authority to create so-called money on a whim, it is certainly not moral. This leads to the next question, which is where does the so-called money come from to allegedly pay the interest on the debt that the, of, of the so-called money? One might think that the so-called money would have to be borrowed since it would appear that the so-called money is created from from debt but this position does not take into consideration the exchange value of the borrowed money for labor if you took out a loan at ten thousand with payments of 900 per month about 80 about 80 dollars of each payment is interest you earn the so-called money to allegedly pay the interest with your labor that's why people say that about the only the only thing that the military social government construct has to offer in exchange for public debt is the people's labor they collect the benefits of the people's labor in the form of income taxes and that's not fucking legal. It's illegal to tax labor. That shit is slavery. You guys got to get up on your fucking laws. So, here, the following statements come from several different sources from Congress, Supreme Court cases, and Federal Reserve. All stem from the passage of HCR 192. So, I highly suggest you guys Google that. Look up HCR 192, June 5th, 1933. Check that out. Right, codified public law 73-10 and it's also codified in all your state codes and statutes as well because it has to be okay so the Treasury writes up an interest bearing bond for one billion dollars the Federal Reserve gives the Treasury one billion dollar credit for the bond it has created out of nothing a one billion dollar debt which the American people are obligated to pay with interest a debt is not paid by the giving of a note all right so a note is only a promise to pay and it's not payment so checks are debt money in themselves, I bet you thought. And so that's from, from a book called I Bet You Thought. So they, the checks, are simply orders from, are simply order forms instructing banks and other depository institutions such as saving banks and credit unions to move transaction balances, which are money. Banks don't keep checks in checking accounts and don't transfer currency or coins when acting on a check's instructions. The money, Federal Reserve notes, will be worth 100 cents on the dollar, backed uh, because it is backed by the credit of the nation it will represent a mortgage on all the homes and other properties of all the people in the nation the money so issued would not have one penny of gold coverage behind it because it does not need it the giving of a federal note does not constitute payment so the use of a federal reserve note is only a promise to pay so if you've been getting paid in promissory notes you have never gotten paid all right so you could literally write off all the all the money that you make every year as a fucking loss because you've never been paid of anything of value. So that's how that shit works. It is a fucking game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these assholes. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.